Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Good evening. Thank you. I want to thank you very much. Thank you very much for inviting me into your living room because every Tuesday night for the past seven seasons, there's been no greater pleasure for me than to come into your living room. And oh, once yeah. again, it's a great pleasure for me to be in your living room oh, yeah. every Tuesday night. <laughs> Not in our living room. What's he so mad about? Well, let's get the show off on the right foot. Huh? It's the Buick Show. It's the Burrow Show. It's the Buick Burrow Show. Coming to you live from New York. Presented by your Buick dealers, with Milton's guest stars, Mickey Rooney, Connie Russell. Oh, I know that very soon, we'll take a honeymoon, my Buick, my love and a guy feel mighty proud. Chewing gum has got chlorophyll. South America's got Brazil. But what I've got is better still. I've got, what do you got, my fan? Humphrey Bogart has got the call. Whistler's mother has got her shawl. But what I've got really beats them all. I've got, what do you got, my fan? It's sheer delight Seeing you stand there before me It seems so right Knowing how much you adore me Mary Healy's got Peter Hayes And the Giants got Willie Mays But I've got that beat in a million ways I've got what he's got I've got my fans In television, this will be your seventh year in television. Don't you think it's time for you to retire? I'm still going like a house of fire. Me retire? Are you kidding? I retire? Oh, you're okay for a fellow your age. For a fellow my age, you must be clowning, Sonny. My, 
You know, according to the census, 46 is my right age. And since I've been a kid, I've been appearing on the stage. I headlined at the palace in Detroit, Duluth, and Dallas. When I was out in Hollywood, they said I did jolly good. I realized my ambition, making good in television. In fact, I've entertained in every place from coast to coast. But television is the medium that I like the most. What about radio? What a delivery. What'd you say to you? <laughs> what about radio? Well, radio's on the beam. It has Huskies, Wheaties, Toshi, Schlitz, Wrigley's, Beaches, Crumbles, Ritz, Kleenex, Clorox, Oxidol, Hicks, Pax, Tootsie Roll, Lysol, Latex, Fidget Air, Mended, Libby's, Munsing, Wear, Flexi, Wheaties, GMC, Bowles, Bats, BBD, and the Easy Aces. Whatever happened to them? <laughs> but it hasn't got the courage and the bravery of Raymar of the Jungle and Pinky Lee. That's why I'd rather be a part of television. This is my home, sweet home. Please believe me. Hollywood? Out of breath. What'd you say? What about Hollywood? Good delivery, too. You're booked. <laughs> well, Hollywood is okay. It's got Clark, Gable, Betty, Grable, Walter, Abel, Warner, Stable, Writer, Fable, Inter, Abel, and your Babel. Wear a sable. We'll be more quicker, more quicker, more quicker. And Marilyn Monroe. I got a joke right here. We'll close the network. <laughs> <laughs> but it doesn't show you cigarettes with dancing feet. All the two fake guarantees to make you kissing sweet. That's why I'd rather be a part of television. This is my home sweet home. You want to know something? Television is fine and dandy. Hollywood and Broadway are dandy too. And that's what I'm after. I love to hear laughter from people just like you. There's just one place for me, and that's near you. Take it from me, I put the tree in the Whatever I may do, it depends on you, and you, and you, and you. I love you all, and I love to be near you. Kids, kids, it's very good. I'm very happy to see. It's nice to see my fans again. And may I tell you how happy I am to see you all. This, uh, this year, my show is going to be much different from any other show. I will definitely not be seen in color. Oh. <laughs> and I will not do a spectacular. My shows will be the most colorless and unspectacular shows you've ever seen. <laughs> now, I'll put that down in black and white. This, uh, this year, I'll put that down in black and white. We're here, aren't we? Okay. Okay. <laughs> This year, no, this year I'm going to take it easy. I'm going to take it easy. I really mean that. If I hear a good joke, I'm going to take it. And for me, that's easy. <laughs> I mean, I'll take it easy. I'm going to be on one week, and I'm going to be off one week. And I'm going to try to get the most glamorous, most beautiful Hollywood stars, Lana Turner, Ava Gardner, Jane Russell. I'll try to get them on my week off. <laughs> and for my week on, I'll be too weak from my week off to be on. <laughs> around again? <laughs> no, well, all kidding aside, if you kids want tickets for my first television show, you write your name and address on the back of Max Liebman. And, uh, and no, you, you leave your name and address at my office. There's Eddie Fisher. Let's get his autograph. Was, hey! Hey! Wait, 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 wait a minute. I... <laughs> Eddie Fisher, so what? I love Debbie. <laughs> so he's pitching with Reynolds, so what? Here in New York, the Yankees were pitching with Reynolds, too. <laughs> so I'll, I'll go in and rehearse the show. It won't bother me. Everything will be all right. I was this. What is this here? Hiya, Dad. Why, I'll get a load of this beautiful thing. <laughs> I thought Hurricane Edna left town. <laughs> when did you blow in, young lady? When did you blow in? Get a load of this outfit, huh? Beautiful. I saw the original on the cover of a magazine, Popular Mechanics. <laughs> I may be wrong, but I think you're beautiful, and I think I may be wrong. Uh, young lady, uh, pardon here. me, I've got a good... Come here, I said, come here. I was, but... Uh, who are you, and give me one good reason. <laughs> I am the president of the Milton Borough Fan Club. Well, that's nice. I love your hair. It's on so straight, too. <laughs> You're the president of the fan club? Well, may I ask you, uh, how many members do you have in the club? How many members? Yeah. Count me? Yeah. One. <laughs> Only one member? When you have roll call, who answers? Chloe? Why, um, why don't you... Why don't you get some more members? Try to get more members. Try, he says. Yeah. Um, every Monday, I go through the subway putting up your pictures. Well, that's very, very nice. Every Tuesday, I go back and rub out the mustaches. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and Wednesday? I rub
rub out the beards. <laughs> well, that's me, Milton Burl, the man from Schweppes. <laughs> Call me a Schweppes schlepper. But I, uh, I, I don't mind beards. I don't mind beards at all. Oh, I don't either. No? Only sometimes they write words. <laughs> Under the picture. And you being a great fan, you erase the words, huh? No, uh -huh. I correct the spelling. I would... <laughs> You should, be, uh, should have been working for the Dodgers. They were in a pretty bad spell themselves. Now listen, uh, young lady, I want to ask you something. This, this, your name, what is your name? Marlene. Marlene, that's a beautiful, Marlene what? Brando. I would... <laughs> that's beautiful. This pretty? I got a Max and I got a Francis. Now I got one that looks like both of them put together. <laughs> and they should all be put away together. Now look, Marlene, would you do me a favor? I've got to go over. In the first place, you say you are my uh, president of my fan club. Why did you start a fan club for me? If you had trouble getting members, why didn't you start a fan club for somebody like Sinatra or Bob Hope? Mm, I hate crowds. I was... <laughs> I hate crowds. So you're going to fight this out alone, huh? Well, that's very, very good. You're brave. You must have, you must have liked me in motion pictures. <laughs> you must have liked me on the radio. Then you must have liked me in television. Mm. <laughs> well, if you didn't like me, why did you start a fan club? Oh, call it madness. I would... <laughs> now listen, that's what you, let's call it quits instead, because I got to go inside. Will you Quits, like... he says, I should call it quits. Yeah. Listen, MB, I'm your number one fan. I'm I very... never call it quits. You don't? Oh, I know how we can get more members. Yeah? Do you mind if I make a little suggestion? Not unless if it's not too suggestive. What is it, what is it? What you need is a big publicity stunt. Publicity yeah, stunt. Yeah, a big one. Someone yeah. get your name on the front page of all the papers. Yeah? Why don't you do something spectacular? There they go with a spectacular. Betty Hutton did that. The greatest spectacular happened up in Maine. Nobody mentioned it. They elected a Democratic governor. That's the greatest spectacular. <laughs> Republicans in the streets here. No, no, what? I mean something really big. Something really, publicity a great publicity stunt. stunt? Someone get you on the front page of every paper. Like what, like what? Like kill yourself. I would. <laughs> kill myself? Not dead, just bleed a little. I would. Now look, who sent you, Ed Sullivan? Look, I've got to go. I, I, I got to go over here and get, get backstage and do my, how do you like this? How do you, how do you like somebody marking up my picture. Look, look you, what you see what I mean? I, listen, get, get your hands off my filthy picture. Get your filthy hands up. Will you get your hands up? Why, Gary Cooper. <laughs> oh, gee. Mickey, you're doing it. Hiya, Mickey, all right? Uh, Melly, it's wonderful. It's to good be to see you, Mickey, and I'm very, very happy. I'm so, so wonderful to have you as my guest on my first show. Oh, it's nothing. I really mean that. You out in California doing your own television show and coming and flying in and doing a show for me? Oh, it's nothing. <laughs> and about the money you're going to pay me? <laughs> oh, it's nothing. I, uh, <laughs> I want to feel like I'm standing between two bookends here. <laughs> uh, this, uh, I'd like you to say hello. This is the president of my fan club. This is your brother, Frank? I was... <laughs> no, my brother's living. Look, uh, funny, it's new, but it's new to me. Um, Marlene, this <clears throat> is uh, Mickey Rooney. You see Mickey Rooney, and he is, he's... <laughs> he's old. <laughs> he is going to be the first guest star on my show. You see, I don't need publicity. My sponsor gives me Rooney as my first guest star. Yeah, gives well, me Rooney. Mel, yeah. what, 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 what? Seems how I'm your first guest yeah, star. Yeah, let, 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 let's go in and rehearse the show, shall yeah, we? Shall we? Please, let's go we to the go. theater. Goodbye, Excuse beautiful. us, please. Goodbye, beautiful. <laughs> beautiful. Oh, gosh. <laughs> how can I get fans for a star like that? When on his first show, his own sponsor gives him a Mickey. <laughs> Mickey, this is it. Guys, hi there, State. Don't be afraid. It's all right. It's all right. Don't be afraid. <laughs> Stage hand. No. This is the theater. This is the theater. This is where they're uh, going to do the new show. I'm so thrilled. Last about year, it. last year, Mickey, we did the show from the Center Theater. The center Theater. And now, this is the Century Theater. Century Theater. This is really a wonderful old theater. Gosh. Put your hat and coat down there on the piano. All right, fine. I'll oh. make myself at home. Will you do that? Fine. Thank you. <laughs> yep. Some great stars played here at this Century Theater, Mickey. Lawrence Olivier. Ethel Barrymore, all the Sir greats. Cedric Hardwick. All the greats. Yes, sir. And now they've put in all this equipment here into this and made this into a television studio for another great name. Who's that? I was. <laughs> Did I mention it? MB. Oh, you mean the ever popular May Bush. I would. <laughs> 
Not May Bush, <laughs> May Burrow, I'm mean, Milton Burrow. <laughs> No, no, Mickey, I do my shows in this theater. You see, yes. some actors do their shows uh, on film, mm -hmm. but not me. You see, I, I, I'm live. Want a bet? I was... <laughs> go to the yard. I mean, oh. I do my show because I like to get close to my audience, and I like to hear my audience laugh. I like to live dangerously, I like... Huh? What do you mean? You know, there's a new thing out in Hollywood now, though, Milt, if I may suggest it to you. Yes. In fact, we do all these, these shows on, on film. On film. And then we put in what we call a laugh track on the side, call them canned laughs. Canned laughs? Canned laughs, that's right here. I brought along a can right here. Oh, yeah? I was going to be on your show. I thought maybe you'd use them. <laughs> <I> was, uh, <laughs> you right. buy these by the can. Huh? Well, that's uh, right. how does it work? How does it work? Well, you see, if you want a little laugh. Uh, is it a good thing? For it, for, it's, it, it's, a, it's a wonderful thing. If you, want a, if you want a little laugh, Yeah. you open it just a little ways, you see? Now watch. Want. Hey, this is a boon. Uh, this is a boon to writers. Boon to writers. It's the biggest of... thing to comics since writers. Yeah, uh, what That's right. You want but a bigger laugh? Bigger laugh. You open a little white. Beautiful. <laughs> you like that note? Yeah. Now, if you want what they call a yucca beanie, a big scream. real kind of a screamer, yeah. you go. <laughs> That's wonderful. Yeah. But that's all. But you see, Mickey, I, I do a show. I, I like to do a show. Uh, you know, I don't like putting on a film. I do a show with a studio audience, and I, I like to get close to my audience all the time. You see what I mean? Why? Oh, call it madness. But that's what I want. Oh, wait a minute. Yeah. Look, 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 Milt. Look, I've got an idea for yeah, you. Yeah. Look, you could come in here right now. Yeah. And do all of the lines that you just showed me. Yeah. Right, you just read to all the people. Yeah. We could use this can. You could get tremendous laughs. Well, let me understand this. Yeah. This dull conversation that we had when we came in the theater just now, we could say these lines. Well, and you could get... say anything you want. We get big laughs with the canned laughs. On straight lines? Straight lines. Trust me. Good for the new season. Want to try it? Let's try it. Thank you. <laughs> Well, Mickey, here we are. This is our new theater. <laughs> last year, last year we did the show from the Center Theater. Good, good, good. And now we're doing the show from the Century Theater. Great. It doesn't want Beautiful, to... beautiful. Oh, they'll be good. We, uh, we had some great stars playing here. <laughs> Wait till I say it. <laughs> Lawrence Olivier. <laughs> Ethel Barrymore, and, and, <laughs> Sir Cedric Hard Wick. Good. <laughs> now, and now, now comes the real punchline. Yeah. You know, the last line. The and big... now, and now they've turned this theater into another television theater right. for a great, great name, Milton Berle. <laughs> <laughs> What was that? What was that? Got to be a heckler in every can. Yeah. <laughs> Mickey, hey, that's a good idea. Can laughs. Can laughs is a great idea. And you want me to tell you something? What? I like this idea, Can. I think my sponsor will go for this idea. Why? What do you mean? Because I heard him saying the other day that if we don't get more laughs on the Buick show, let's can Burl. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what he meant. <laughs> now they wouldn't can me. Wouldn't? No, I was, I was thinking about... I was thinking about that kid we met outside. Do I need a big publicity stunt to start the first season off? Publicity stunt? Milton, listen. You, you need to have your name on every person's lips in America. I should, huh? It's very important to you. Yeah. Because after all, when they say Frank, right away you think of Sinatra. That's right. When they say of Ike, yeah. when they say Ike, yeah. right away you think of our great president, I'm, President Eisenhower. Yeah. And when they, say, when they say Marilyn, right away you think of Joe DiMaggio, right? <laughs> right? You think of DiMaggio. <laughs> I'll make a Marilyn. Sure. Come here, I want to have an Andy Hardy to Hardy talk with you. I, I, I don't understand. I want to have an Andy to Hardy. Oh, now that's for, oh, there's another case in instance. I, I got no a case. Look at you say Andy Hardy right away. Who do you think of right away, huh? Marilyn Monroe. <laughs> I say Andy Hardy. You think of Marilyn Monroe? You can mention cornflakes. I'll think of Marilyn Monroe. Pillsbury <laughs> flour. Oh. But I I see what you mean, Mickey, by nicknames. I exactly. Nicknames are very important, Milt. They what? Yes, they're very important they're nicknames. Very important. Let, let, let me show you what I mean right now. They're very important. Oh, names, names, nick, nick, name, nick, nick, name, 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 name. Your name is James. They call you John. Your name is Maxwell. Yeah. They call you Max. Very good. They call you James. Yeah. They call you Jim. Yeah. And if you are old skin and bones, they call you Slim. Right. If your name is William, they call you Will. If your name is Philip, they call you Phil. Yeah. If your name is Alfred, they call you Al. If you don't know your name, hey, they, they call, call you Pal. Nick, 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 Nick,
Your name is Joseph. Well, they call you? They call you Joe. That's right. Your name is Frederick. <laughs> they call you Fred. Right, Milton. No. And if you have a freckled face, they, they call, call you Red. If your name is William, they call you Will. Yeah. If your name is Philip, they call you Bill. If your name is Alfred, they call you Al. Yes. If you don't know your name, hey, hey. they call you Pal. Yes. A wise man once said, what's in a name? A rose is a rose. Sing it, Dad. A rose. Oh, I'm singing it. Black man. The name is arranged by the mother, you... And then you fool me, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Two little names. Your name is Lennon. Yes, they call you they what? They call you Lenny. Lenny, Lenny? Your name is Heathcliff. What do they call you? They call you Henny. That's right, Mel. Your name is Daniel. What do they call you? They call you Dan. Yeah. And if you dig that crazy jive, uh, they call, call you man. man. Yeah. If your name is How Lawrence, they call you Larry. If your name is Harold, they call you Harry. That's your name is Lee Louis, they call you Lou. If your name is Stuart, they call you Stu. If your name is Richard, they call you Dick. If your name is Nicholas, they call you Nick. If your name is Terrence, they call you Terry. If your name is Gerald, they call you Jerry. If your name is William, they call you Will. If your name is Philip, they call you Phil. If your name is Alpha, they call you Al. And if you don't know your name, and if they don't know your name, they call you Mickey, you're, you're absolutely right, Mickey. You're absolutely right. I've got to get my name known. The minute somebody says Milt, they got to think of Milton Berle. Yeah. Yes, I got to make my fans Milton Berle conscious. First, you got to make them conscious. I was. <laughs> are you kidding? If they were conscious, they wouldn't be my fans. Look, <laughs> tell you, come on, let's go into my dressing room. I'll speak to my secretary, Max. I'll have a call up the newspapers and give them some fantastic like idea. Uh, I'll give him some fantastic ideas. You will. You're going to give him fantastic ideas. What could you say to him would be important, though, Milt? You want me to tell you? What I'll, could you possibly say? I'll tell him that I am going to pitch for the Giants in the World Series. Very good. Who would think that would be so wonderful? <laughs> All the people in Cleveland. Come on, let's go into Max. Important, drop everything, drop everything. I would... Oh, what are you doing? What are you doing? Does this mean we're engaged? Oh, Max, please, cut it out, cut it out. Really? Yeah. My mother says it's cut out enough. I was. <laughs> this girl had the new flat look before Dior. It starts from the top of her head. Uh, Max, uh, you remember Mickey? Oh, sure. Hello, Mrs. Spillane. <laughs> <laughs> Pardon me, but my name is Rooney. Oh, sure. Hello, Pat. I... That's right, Pat Spillane. Yeah, Pat Spillane. Yeah, that's thought. what I thought. No, no, you, you remember the Andy Hardy pictures? Yeah. This is, uh, this is Andy. Oh, sure. How's Amos? I was... Everybody's fine. I'm going to... Wait a minute. Oh, look, look I'm going to... Milton. Yeah. Please, look, I've got an idea for you. What? You're talking about publicity? Yeah. All you have to do is get a life-size trunk, yeah. put Max into the trunk, tie it up with big rope, yeah. push her off the George Washington Bridge, down it goes. Have you got the idea? Good idea. She wouldn't do it. She's not a good sport. <laughs> Max, uh, come here. I want to speak to you. I, uh, I'm going in for a lot of uh, publicity this year. I want to get my name on the front pages of the paper. I, I'm thinking up of a great revolutionary idea. How about eloping with your secretary? I said revolutionary, not revolting. Please. Don't fight it, Milton. It's bigger than both of us. Will you please? Will you do me a favor? Please, leave me alone. I, 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 the, the Andy Hardy pictures weren't big enough, but now, hey, Mulligan. Wait a minute, just Hey, a Mulligan, at 8 o'clock on Saturday front. nights. What are you doing? What are you doing? The, what are you doing? What are you I'm sorry, on? I had nothing to say for a minute. I thought I'd plug my own program. <laughs> Giant green pea? <laughs> Every... <laughs> What's that? I'm making my own. <laughs> now, so, Max, I, 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 I want to tell you, we're going to do a very great idea, a very big publicity, son. I want you to call up all the newspapers and tell all the columnists to come down here. <gasps> You want to invite some communists was... down here? <laughs> no, not communists. I'm talking about newspaper men. Newspaper men. I'm going to come up with a great idea. Something great. Something sensational. Something radical. That's what I said, communists. I was... Max, leave. 
I think this girl has a few little Kremlins running around in her head. <laughs> she certainly got the space for it. Uh, Max, please, <laughs> will you do me a favor? I want you to call John Crosby of the Tribune, Val Adams of the Times, Harry Van Horn of the World Telegram, and Ben Gross of the Daily News. That's four columnists. I need one more columnist. <gasps> you want me to call a fifth columnist? <laughs> This is murder. Max, do you know what you're doing to my head? It's bigger than both of us. <laughs> Mickey. Yes. What was that again? First you get a big trunk. Trunk. Wrap her in the trunk. I, I see what you mean. Farrell. Yeah. Mr. Farrell, already on stage to rehearse the Connie Russell number. Oh, they're going to rehearse the Connie Russell number. Connie Russell That's number. I'd love to. Max, love don't forget. Do as I told you. Get all those columnists down here immediately. I've got a great I'd idea. I'd love to see if the Connie Russell number is wonderful. If he wants to invite those people down here, hello, information. Can you give me the number of the Russian embassy?
folks, it's it's nice to be back. It, it really is. And, and while I'm sure you've been seeing lots of Buicks on the highways this summer, I'd like to show you one on your screen tonight for a very special reason. And here it is, the most exciting, eye-catching example of Buick's striking new styling, the panoramic windshield. Even in a year when everything about a Buick is new, this basic change in windshield design still stands as Buick's greatest departure from the past. To appreciate this, folks, please realize that in the whole history of automobile design, there have been only two other changes in windshields. The first cars had no windshields, you know, so first they put them on as an extra, uh, straight up and down, just like you see right here. Then, about 20 years ago, came the second change, and they introduced slanted windshields like this. You'll notice that on this one, the side pillars or corner posts sloped forward like this, which obviously reduced visibility. Now, they stayed with this design for about, oh, 20 years. And they stayed with this one for about 20 years. And just as the old straight up and down style gave way to the slanting windshield, that's this one over here. Well, this one is going to give away to this one as fast as the rest of the automobile industry can make the change. So take a look at the style of tomorrow, which you can get on a Buick today. And what does that mean to you? It means that this 1954 Buick will be in style next year and for years to come. And you can get this styling in the future on this Buick Special, the lowest priced car in the market with a panoramic windshield. In fact, this Buick Special two-door six-passenger sedan is a beautiful buy, a tremendous value for a flock of reasons. There's the brilliant, performing, brand-new V8 engine. There's Buick big car room. There's real luxury-laden comfort in its deep, soft seats, upholstered, mind you, in nylon. And, of course, this Special, like all Buicks, gives you the famed million-dollar ride. Actually, it's a little hard to believe that you can get so much for the low price that you'll find right here. Yes, folks, when you take a look at this tag, be prepared for a pleasant surprise. You'll find the price on this special, and I mean the local delivered price, excluding optional equipment and local taxes, if any, but including delivery to your TV station city. You'll find this price actually lower than some models of the so-called low price. I ask you, friends, with values like these, is it any wonder that Buick moved into third place or that Buick strengthens its new standing each month but try this Buick yourself. Thrill to its wide-view panoramic windshield. Sample great performance. And ask your Buick dealer about the big three-way bonus you get by buying a Buick right now. See him tomorrow. And, and now let's go back to the Century Theater where uh, we'll see what's happening with Milton and his big publicity idea. <laughs> I just heard about it. What's the matter with you? Uh, what happened? Yeah. What happened? What happened? I, 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 nothing, nothing at all. I just broke a leg, that's all. Broke a leg? Which one? Yeah, yeah. Which one did you break? Right there. I... Doesn't seem broken to me. It don't? No. No, not this one. No. How about this one? <laughs> How about this one? I'll, uh... I'll call a doctor no, for you, Mel. Please, I'll Mickey, call Mickey, a doctor Mickey, for you right away. Mickey, what's the matter? Don't call a doctor, please. No? This is just a big publicity stunt. You see, it'll get in all the papers. I can see the headlines now. Yeah. Milton Gleason. I mean, Milton uh, Burrow. <laughs> Milton Burrow breaks. Milton Burrow breaks his leg. I can see it all in the papers. I can see it. I, I got. I got news for you. I know. I know what you're doing now. What do you mean? You know, you not only steal other comics' gags, you're stealing their accidents. I was. Oh. Are you kidding? <laughs> stealing their accidents. That's, that's very funny. That's right. Don't kid around with me there, yeah, Rooney. Yeah. Nobody breaks a leg like Burrow. What do you mean? <laughs> and I do it with the original cast, too. <laughs> Watch this. Yeah. Watch this. Oh, this is going to be the front page. This is going to be sensational. Get it right on, Mill. Walk around like this. Yeah. Everybody think I broke Hey, this will be a tr some sensational idea. Hey, oh, gosh. I'd live to see. Yeah. Gonna, yeah, you got it. I'm going to call a columnist. You want to call a columnist? I think I'll call Dorothy Kilgallen at the Journal American. Right. One, get her on wonderful the idea. Boy. Wonderful idea. So all you need in show business, one good break. Hello? Hello, Dorothy? Yes. Yeah. Hello. Uh, <laughs> Dorothy? Yes? Dorothy, st stop the presses. Tear out the front page. Have I got a story for you? Is it bigger than a bread box? I... 
Dorothy, wait, what do you mean big, if it's bigger than both of us? Look, you, you know who this is, don't you? Uh, do you work for a profit-making organization? <laughs> I am a profit-making organization. This is Milton Burrow. Oh, there's a product involved. Product? Corn. <laughs> oh, Dorothy, this is serious. This is serious. I, I broke my leg. Uh, do you wear it above the waist or below the waist? I wear it below the garter belt. <laughs> Dorothy, will, will you please stop what's maligning me? I, I broke my leg while I was rehearsing my show. Isn't that some story, huh? Well, of course it is, Milton. I thought you were kidding. I'm not kidding at all. If it's serious, I'll print it. Uh, what hospital are you in? What did you say? What? I said, what hospital are you in? The hospital. Huh? She wants to know what hospital I'm in. Uh, the, uh, the, the Be Be Bellevue. 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 I'm, I'm at the... <laughs> I'm at the Bellevue Hospital. Bellevue? Okay, Milton, I'll be right down. Yeah, just wait a minute. Just hey, a... Milton, this is a very important story. Why don't you talk to Jack O'Brien, our television editor, and we'll both come down to see you. I'll connect you with him. Just a minute. Operator? Operator? She fell for it. She, she fell did. for the whole thing. Over the whole she, thing. She's going to connect me with Jack O'Brien. Good. They're coming down to see me. Right. Hey, wait a minute. What am I going to do about a hospital? Well, I, I have to get through talking to Jack O'Brien. I'll call an ambulance and take you over to the hospital. Okay, right? okay, okay. <laughs> That's a good idea. That's a good idea. Hello, this is Jack O'Brien's office. Uh, I'd, I'd like to speak to Jack O'Brien. This is Milton Burrow. Oh, just a moment. It's for you, Mr. O'Brien. Uh, who is it? Milton Burrow's on the phone. Tell him I'm out. Tell him I'm sick. Tell him I just dropped dead. Tell him. He's out. He's sick. He just dropped dead. He's out. He's sick. He just dropped dead. But, but tell him I got a big scoop for him. He's got a big scoop for you. I'm all right, I'll talk to him. Here he is, Mr. Burrow. Yeah. I just caught him at the elevator on the way down. <laughs> hello, Mr. Television. Oh, hello, hello, Jack. How are you? How are you? How are you? Big story. Well, Jack, I got sad news for you. I, I broke a leg. Yeah? Whose? <laughs> Whose? Mine. I, I broke my leg while I was rehearsing the show. And I, I'm in Bellevue Hospital. Bellevue? Yeah. Good, good. I'll be right down. We'll take a lot of pictures. Besides, yeah. I got a bone to pick with you. You got a bone to pick with me? Well, yeah. you better hurry up while there's some left. <laughs> okay. okay. Well, now look, Mickey. Yeah. Call up and get an ambulance right away. I got to get down there right away. Milk, I'll take care of everything. Don't you worry about a thing. Yeah, do that. Hello. Get the Give me the Bellevue Hospital, please. Hello. Hello, Bellevue Hospital. Would you send an ambulance over, please? Century Theater, please. Pick up Mr. Milton Burrow. That's right. He's in great pain. I know you're busy. <laughs> I know you're busy. But I want him to be picked up right immediately. <laughs> That's right. Look, I know Mr. Irving Bellevue, and I don't want to have to go to the top, sir. He's a one. Thank you. We'll appreciate it. Milton, he's a... <laughs> Fast service you have just seen was made possible because the ambulance used was a Buick. Belmont. It's killing me. It's killing me. Oh, Mr. Burl, I do not like this. I do not like this. You don't? This cast doesn't look right. No? We'll have to remove the cast and break the leg again. <laughs> break, break the leg. No, no, you don't. You see, you see, well, I have complete confidence in my doctor. My doctor said the leg is all right. He said it'll be my complete confidence in my doctor. Your doctor? Yes, sir. Who is your doctor? Uh, the doctor, um... Yes? Um... 
who's my doctor? Uh, hmm? do, my doctor. Oh, oh I am his doctor. <laughs> my name is Doctor Gillespie. <laughs> and I am certain that I have found out. I happen to know that four out of five doctors have studied medicine. <laughs> and then there was Doctor Kinsey. Well, I happen to know that I would put this leg before any jury. Now, please. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, I assure you that this man's I leg I is not up. going to the up. chair. The whole thing. I happen please. to know that if I separate... Ah! Ah! I'll take the leg right off. You're separating the leg. I stop it. Please. Just a moment, please. Yeah. Uh, are you an M.D.? Oh, Am yes. I? Yeah, he's an M.D. He's a midget doctor. That's what <laughs> I still say this leg is not set correctly. Now, just a moment. You're telling me that I didn't make a proper analysis? I happen to know that the shin bones connect to the thigh bone, the thigh bone connect to the knee bone, the knee bones connect to the pelvis bone, the pelvis bone connects to the femur bone. Stop it! Please, please! You quiet! Quiet! Oh, I can't stand this. I gotta get out of here. I can't stand this. Mickey, what are you doing? What are you doing? Now, just a minute, All Mr. right, the bit is over. The bit is I'll... over. What? Now, stop it. You I'm went sorry. over, but you nearly I'm ruined sorry. the whole thing. I'm sorry, Milton. If you I'm want to help do... you. You want to help me? That's right. Then get me a nurse. Someone that looks like Grable. Now, Mr. Dear Johnny, you don't do that good. I said Grable, not Gable. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. Will you, will you help me out, please? I'll help you anyway. I'm I expecting can. Dorothy Kilgallen yes. and Jack O'Brien here any minute. Uh, so, I was... Uh, here we are. Oh! Nice. What's the meaning of it? Who's this fellow? Who is he? Why, he's a patient. A patient? Yes, and he's sharing this room with you. Sharing this room? Nothing. I have a room all by myself. We're very crowded. We have no private room. Oh, no. Here. Well, I'll see the ones higher up. You, 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 you get me Blue Cross on the phone. You get me the medic or young Dr. Malone. Mr. Burl, you'll have to be quiet. This man needs his rest. He does? That's right. And I want you to go right to sleep. I'll be back in an hour to wake you up and give you a sleeping pill. <laughs> Where are you going? Where are you going? I don't feel so well. No? I think I'm going to take a turn for the nurse. <laughs> Mickey, Mickey, will you please, will you do... That's the way they wrote it, I'm sorry. <laughs> so everything happens to me, oh. Oh, what's, what's the matter, buddy? What's the matter? Oh, Tell me. I was feeling all right until yesterday. Yeah, yeah. And then all of a sudden... Yeah. Ah! Oh, this is pitiful. Everything happened. I don't know what I'm going to do. Hey! Hey! I just heard you know you. Francis! I just heard the bad news. Francis, this is a nice gesture of you coming in to see me. I want to shake your hand. This is wonderful for you to come to see me here. Anytime, anytime you're in a hospital, I'll be very glad to see you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. You should only be in the hospital as many times as I'd be glad to see you there. Thank you. Thank you. I think. I think. So what's the matter with you, I hope? I was... What's the matter with me? I broke my leg. Can't you see? Francis, this is my broken leg. Oh, hey, Joe. I was... Oh, all right. Now, that's fine. That's fine. You come in the hospital, you want to make fun of me. You have no feelings laughing at me. How would you like to be lying here? Next to you? Yeah. Yeah. I would... <laughs> How do you like that? A star on television for seven years and you say ich. I feel like I'm the seven-year ich. Seven-year ich. No, don't start now. Seven no, don't start now. that gorgeous... Now, please. Oh, oh, that's marvelous. Take it easy. Marvelous. Yeah. I think that's so, oh, such no. a job. Yeah. Such a mind. Very good. Thank that's you. worthy of a twain. A twain? Mark Twain? Choo choo twain. You should be hit by one of them. See here and I want Take wanna... your antiseptic appendages off the alpaca. <laughs> Antiseptic appendix? You are fogging up the fiberglass. I was fogging up the fiberglass. And I'll tell you another thing. What do you want? Uh-huh. What? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. So what happened to the broken leg? Oh, the broken leg. The broken leg. There it is right there. Oh, how do you do? Yeah, I... we met before. I... Oh, I see the whole thing already. It's what? a fake. It's a phony. No, it isn't. I see it. Please, look. This is a big publicity stunt. It's a trivial publicity stunt. It's a trivial publicity stunt. Yeah, it'll be I on knew... the front pages. Front pages. I knew right away you were a fake. I always said Milton Berle was a phony no, and please. a fake. Don't, don't speak. Milton Berle's a fake. Please. Hey, Milton Berle's a fake. Please. Please. He's a fake. Please. Milton Berle's a fake. He's a fake. 
please. On the phone, Nick. I was sure. <laughs> Francis, now please, I'll have you know that I'm a very important man. Ooh, chip, chip, chip. Very important man. <laughs> He's such a big man. Yeah? How come you haven't got a private nurse? I have got a private nurse. She's standing outside. Sure, she's outside. She come in here, she'll take one look at you, she'll get sick to her stomach. <laughs> Stars like me do not grow on trees. You should be hanging from one. I was... <laughs> now listen, Francis, now listen. If you keep this idea quiet, the publicity stunt, I'll give you a $5 raise. I got a better deal for you. What? You listening? Yeah. Break your leg for real. I'll take a $10 cut. I was... <laughs> Oh, Francis, please. Please, Francis, you've got to help me. You've got to help me. I'm expecting newspaper people here any minute. And I, I need a little comfy. I need a little rest and peace. Be my guest. Rest and peace. I was... <laughs> Francis, please, do me a favor. Yeah. I don't want this guy to hear me. Don't say a word about this to anybody, and I'll give you the $5 raise. I'll tell you the truth. I'll take it, because I need the raise. You, do? you know, I need the money. It puts me in a better income bracket, you yeah. know? The nouveau poor. The nouveau poor. You know what I mean? Yeah. So my lips are sealed. Yeah. My lips are sealed. I go now, master. My lips are sealed. My lips are sealed. Goodbye, master. My lips are sealed. Come to think of it, he does look like a seal. <laughs> oh, boy, am I sorry that I ever... Oh, I... Uh, oh, listen, buddy, I can't stand you more than all sitting next to... What, what's the matter? What's the trouble with you? Tell me, what's the trouble? You wouldn't believe Yes, I will. Tell me, what's the trouble, please, before we get back with... Well, a couple of months ago, yeah. my wife said to me... You, yeah? So I went to a doctor. You went to the doctor, yeah? I'd say... Water. You want some water? Yes, yeah, sure. There's some water. There's some water. Drink it up quick. That's it. Drink it. That's fine. Now, tell me, what, what, what is it? So... Yeah. <laughs> That's fine, that's fine. Okay, now tell me, what's... Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> there you are, there's some more water. Now tell me, tell me, tell me, what, what, what's happened? What happened? What happened? Well, I'll give it to you from the tap. <laughs> <laughs> Your pipes are clogged, buddy. You should be gargling with Drano. Now, will you do me a favor and rest up? Milt! Everything? Yeah. Milt! Yeah? I've got a visitor outside oh, for you. Dorothy She's here. Dorothy, Dorothy, She's Dorothy. here. I'll I bring her right in, Milt. i got to get him. i got to get him. I can't get it on. I just heard you broke your leg. Yeah, I broke my leg. Don't worry, Milt, and I won't let them shoot you. I was... Stop bossing around. Will you match, please? Yes, it's my leg. That poor leg. Yeah, I was... Ah, I thought you broke your leg. Well, I did break it. I broke my leg, but it's it's spreading. <laughs> it's spreading. Don't worry, Milton. I'll take care of you. I'll be your nurse. Yeah? I'll be your Florence night and gown. I would... <laughs> Don't start the pajama game. Now, will you do me... I just bought this book, Milton. Yeah? It tells me how to take care of you. What's the name of the book? This book... Oh. Oh, no, no. Look, Francis, will you, I, mean, I mean, Max, he just left. Will you take rid of that book and get rid of yourself, Don't please? Don't fight it. I'm not fighting it. I'm lying here flat on my... It's bigger than both of us. Stop it! I'm expecting Dorothy Kilgallen here any minute and Jack O'Brien. I'm expecting. I'm expecting here any minute. Well, congratulations. It's a beautiful baby boy. <laughs> You got the wrong mother. <laughs> What's going on here? What's going oh, on? Baby, uh, you're not Uncle Milky, you're Auntie Milky. I was... <laughs> nice, get that, uh, get that nurse back quick, yes, right no. away. She, she made a mistake. Nurse? Quick, what kind of a hospital nurse? this is. I never heard such a hospital in my life. They put a baby in my arms here. I never... I... <laughs> <laughs> uh, hello. Hello, Dorothy. Hello, hello Jack. Uh, what about the broken leg? The, the, what? Ah, the broken ah, leg. Ah, the broken leg. Oh, baby. Yes. This must be one of those NBC spectaculars. Yeah. No, no, they, you don't understand. You see, that they, they... This is bigger than the Lucille Ball story. No, you, you don't... You, you don't, don't under... get a picture. Don't take that. a picture, get please. A picture. Don't. Ah! No, please. Please, they made a mistake. I, I broke my leg, Jack. I broke my leg. Yeah, well, where's the broken leg? I was... Oh, oh here's the broken leg. Right... Oh, I'm, I'm awfully sorry. I, I, I didn't... Mr. Burrow, yeah. give me that baby. I, I made a terrible mistake. I should say you made a good, big mistake. Give that baby back to the person it belongs to. I certainly will. Sure. Here you are, sir. Here's your baby. You? 
I told you you wouldn't believe it. Oh, no. Well, in just a moment, we'll see how Milton Burrow made out with his big publicity campaign. Folks, here's the uh, greatest machine ever invented. Thanks, Jim. To tell a used car buyer exactly what he's getting for his money. Yes, sir, it takes the guesswork out of used car buying. Up here, as you see, it has three dials. Now, all a mechanic has to do is connect these wires right here to various parts of the engine and the electrical system. Then, start the engine and read what this electronic marble says. Now, he can tell how the generator, the starter, and the distributor are working. He can check the timing, the wiring to each spark plug, making sure that it fires properly in all kinds of weather. But that's not all. What you want to know when you buy a car that someone else has turned in is whether or not there is something wrong inside that engine. So the mechanic who operates this machine checks the manifold vacuum and tests the compression. And if you know anything at all about automobile engines, you know that if the manifold vacuum is steady and the compression is all right in every cylinder, it's a safe bet that there are no worn piston rings, no oil-wasting blow-by in any of the cylinders, and that the valves are not warped or sticky. The whole test takes less than 10 minutes and tells you more than two hours of old-fashioned road testing. And if this safety scope says that everything is all right beneath that hood, then that settles it. You can buy a safety scope car and know it's exactly as represented. Now, you don't have to guess. You don't have to gamble. You know, you get a used car you can bank on when you buy from a Buick dealer. And remember, Buick dealers and only Buick dealers can offer you these electronically safety scope used cars. And get this. With every safety scope car, you get this check card, which includes a long list of other safety tests and inspections, including brakes, lights, steering wheel, transmission, and so forth. Now, why do you suppose your Buick dealer goes this far to make sure of your satisfaction? Well, friends, he knows he has a fine reputation to maintain as a new car dealer and good citizen of your community. And he wants used car buyers to be just as satisfied as new car buyers. Right now, he has a wonderful selection because he's having one of the greatest years in history and he's offering bedrock prices. He can afford to because business is good. So be sure and see your Buick dealer. Look for this sticker on his safety scoped used car. Now more than ever, you get a better used car buy from a Buick dealer. And now, let's get back and see how the newspapers treated Milton Berle's big publicity stunt the next day. baby backfires. <laughs> they refer to you as the king of television, you know, all the time in here in Variety. Yeah. They refer to you as the queen of television. <laughs> Very funny. Sorry, Milt. I say that. Right there. Milton Berle is America's number one comedian. <laughs> Very funny. Milt, never mind what they say in there. We're going to do a great show together when we do it. I got you know what I was you? figuring, Mickey? What? I was just figuring out something. What? Publicity. Publicity is no substitute for a good show. You're right, huh? I mean that, seriously. I mean that. Publicity is... When we do a show, Mickey, we won't depend on publicity. Lots of luck. Thanks a lot, Milt. I'll see you at rehearsal. Right, sweetie. So long. Bye. Bye, Mickey. <laughs> yep. Publicity is also no substitute for a very, very good automobile. And as you know, ladies and gentlemen, 
Buick is now outselling all other cars except two of the low price three, and that is a complete upset. You know, traditional sales standings show that month by month, Buick sales zoom higher and higher. So um, why don't you see why this happens? Why don't you drive a sensational 54 Buick yourself? Your Buick dealer will be very, very happy to put you behind the wheel. Ladies and gentlemen, next week, uh, I will be off, and I will only be on twice a month. So we're going to take it easy now. This being the seventh season in television, we first started our first show back June 8th. June 8th, back in 1948, for our other very wonderful sponsor, Texas Company. And uh, we uh, were very, very grateful on behalf of this seventh year. Very grateful that you have been such a very, very wonderful audience, all you people that have been watching the shows and sending in your letters. And you know, this is a very, very funny racket, but um, you know, when I first started quite a few years ago, back in 19, season of 1940, 48, I did my first show, I said to myself, I said, gee, girl, how are you gonna make it? How are you gonna last out the season? Well, after the fourth show, I got a little more energy and uh, got some more writers and uh, we sort of came through. But this could have not been possible, ladies and gentlemen. Again, I say, without the aid of you very wonderful viewers that keep watching our show. So we want you to keep watching it on behalf of the Buick Dealers of America. And may I just say, ladies and gentlemen, that next week, uh, the very, very hilarious and very sensational Miss Martha Ray will uh, jump into the Tuesday night spot at 8 to 9, Eastern Standard Time, with a very, very hilarious show featuring Wally Cox and Rocky Graziano. Then I will be back the week after that, October 5th, that's two weeks from tonight, with my guest stars, Fernando Lamas and uh, Arlene Dahl. And as usual, I heard a ooh here. Did I hear an ooh? <laughs> ooh for Fernando or Arlene? <laughs> Both. And then we'll have as our steadies Ruth Max Gilbert, Arnold Francis Stang, and our new little star, Nancy Walker. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of Alan Roth and the entire show, may I sincerely thank you. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. You've been a very wonderful audience. And I'd like to leave you with just one thought, ladies and gentlemen. I'd like to say there's just one place for me, and that's near you. It's been a pleasure this evening, once again, in the beginning of the seventh year, for me to be so close and so near you. How about all of us making a date for two weeks from tonight, Tuesday night, October 5th at 8? Will we? I'll try to make show business bloom right inside your living room. And now, ladies and gentlemen, now that our show is all through, may I say the Buick dealers of America thank you and you and you and you. And so, farewell. It's been swell being here.